Let's see what my wife is doing. Oh, there she is. Hey, good morning. <clears throat> Welcome back to our Becca Eden garden. I'm out here still harvesting the moringa. You know, this is the third harvest I've received from this tree. Right now, we're doing really good because we still have time. The weather is still nice and warm, and I'm still getting lots of beautiful moringa from our moringa tree. So after this, we're going to do a little bit of pruning. When the tree goes into like a dormant stage, we'll trim it just a little bit. But this is so beautiful and so nutritious. It is. Yeah, and this is like my third time. The last one that I got, I powdered it down and it's ready to go. And this one I'm going to dry out. So today I'm out just kind of forging still. Got moringa. I've already got some lemongrass. Um, I have lemongrass in here too. I'm checking the cat dip. And I'll probably come back to cut this. And um, there's three other catnip bushes out here to cut some of that. I did get um, some leaf of life plants, uh, some of the leaves. And I will go back and get more of the leaf of life and some elderberry cuttings too, because the leaves are just as medicinal for making teas. And at this time in the winter time, that's gonna be right around the corner. This is good for respiratory, coughs, so many things, even for bug bites, mosquitoes especially, which we've been getting a lot. I don't wanna really use it on my mosquito bites because it's so, medicinal and I love to use it for other purposes but it does work for mosquito bites as well so that's the leaf of life and I'm going to be going around I also picked um, in my goody little basket I had okra that I picked this morning too I'm usually getting uh, like five to eight different okras uh, every morning and they're still going strong we have okra like in three different places these beautiful little flowers you can eat the leaves as well as the flowers and they have a beautiful delight underground this is uh the sun choke and so it's growing between the two pistachio trees and it is massive yes and we have another batch too so i'm hoping to have a nice clump of uh jerusalem artichokes or sun chokes underground once they start to die back but i will be taking some leaves today and drying these as well they're good for soups stews um i cook a lot of soups and stews in the fall and winter so even if i don't use them fresh I can freeze them in my freeze dryer or I can dry them and use them like as a filling and a, you know, and a, a seasoning to go in my soups to thicken it and they work really well. So I have some large okra that I left on the vines that I'm going to be leaving for seed, but I'm still getting okra. You can see the new ones on there and like every two days, if you don't check in two days, they'll be huge. So every two days. I'm out and I'm pulling okra from my okra patch. This is beautiful mullen. This is a huge mullen right here. And then I have a whole bed of mullen um, next, in the next bed. And then I have some scotch bonnets coming up in here, right in there. This is called what, the poor man's toilet paper mullen? Yeah, mullen's poor man's, uh, but it's also good for respiratory. Uh, mullen is good for earaches. It's good for um, many things. I make wonderful teas from this mullen. So this is all mullen in here. It's so soft. I can't believe how soft it is. It's softer than tissue. And what's this thing right here? I mean, we've been growing it, but I keep forgetting. What, uh, that's the Nepalese. For? This is our mother Nepalese. We take a lot of cuttings from her. And I use this also in juicing. I stir fry them. Um, this one I don't take from uh, other than to propagate a new plant and we have lots of new plants and um, I'm gonna go and give you a view of our side garden out here and you can see that We have I just cut these this morning the lemongrass I still have some over here to cut and then there's some more on the other side. There's rosemary over here my Jamaican hibiscus or rosels. You can see now the beautiful little catalysts are coming on and they're getting big so fast. I was stressing that I was not going to make it in time. This plant grew from nothing so 
I was worried that the season, and I kept reading about it because this is my first time growing it, saying that, you know what, the, the flowers or the little pots that we want don't come until the fall and they have to get cooler, you know, but I'm really like a, a nurturing mom out here just hovering over it saying it's not going to happen. So it happened. It happened in about two weeks and here they are. They're on here. They're growing strong and I'm loving it because I'm going to have a lot of fruit. I didn't want to start taking the leaves until I knew that the flowers were set in place because that's what I'm going to be using for the tea. But the, use are, the leaves are medicinal too, so you can use them. And I have another one growing back here too in between uh, the bougainvillea. And it's these are edibles taking, for teas as well. Off so well. Yeah, they're taking off really good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So we had a wonderful guava bush out here. And our gardener decided to prune it with the privets. So, so it's here. These leaves are edible once mm -hmm. again. Made I make teas out of these. And they, they have a lot of health benefits too. And I was telling you about the Nepalis. So these are all of the babies. And this is a three year process of me just taking babies from the big mother out here. And there they are. So I use these for juicing mostly. I don't let them get too tall. So I'll take them and I'll use them for juicing and things of that nature. You know, you can have an edible food forest right hidden in your yard. Yes, we have an HOA, but we keep it in line. But also we have hawthorn berries growing and I pick my own hawthorn berries too. Um, there are several bushes around the property and these are now turning purple. These are hawthorn berries and when they get dark purple and hard, then I will take them. And also, you know, these are very medicinal. Lantana is planted over there. Lantana was supposedly very poison. Um, and when you find out in other cultures that this is also used for, for medicinal purposes. I would not advise you to use anything unless you actually look it up, do your homework. Don't depend on me or anybody else. Do your own homework. But yes, the lantana does have medicinal properties to it as well. And then there's more hawthorn out here. You can see the hawthorn berries as my husband is showing you here. And then on that plant and some bottle brush. You know, but everything has a purpose. Even the privets have purpose too. So that'll be interesting for you to look up. But we rarely give you a view of our front property and side property. And right now we're just showing you here in North Las Vegas, Nevada, that we're growing everywhere. And yes, you can grow edibles and medicinal things. <clears throat> I didn't show you my bay leaf. And I use this for stews. Um, it's good for a lot of things. And I use this bay leaf quite a bit, making teas from this as well. It's growing pretty tall here. They didn't get a chance to cut this one, and I was happy Thank that goodness. they didn't. Thank goodness. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I would not been happy. Yeah. So that's just a little view of our front area and I'm going to be switching that over to go back to the backyard so I'll see you in a minute. that I transplanted and it's doing pretty good here and also these are baby plants they won't be they don't look like a lot now but believe me in the uh, winter they'll be coming up this is arugula that's coming in um, I have I believe it's a little bit of spinach in here and of course I have different types of lettuce growing in these different boxes this is more perpetual spinach here more lettuce Some dandelions that are still hanging in there and spinach coming in here and over here and these towers so that'll save us trips from going to the grocery store just when we need some greens live greens for salads my sweet potato here is playing out a little bit so that means i probably have something under um, i have oregano this is amaranth which needs to be pulled out and lavender mint, lemon balm, peppers, and I think this might be, I'm not sure. Oh, this is uh, a lettuce too. And this is 
holy basil and I will be cutting this today too just to dry I have so much of it so I want to go ahead and start to preserve that holy basil and to my other side there's more lemon balm here in the midst of dandelions and Swiss chard and comfrey and I'll be cutting those today too the comfrey for salves our cannabis plant which we use for teas and rubs as well they're doing good you can see the buds on them I have the leaf of life planted right in between the other plants in here they really do good here if you have them in a little bit of shade more of a tropical environment I have some white sage I'm going to be using for uh, to making some smudging sticks I have peppers in between there peppers in here uh, Jamaican cherries on the end and I have guinea hen weed and now as I can see some of the leaves are getting a little bit lighter I will be also taking some of the leaves from here the guinea hen is surrounded by Jamaican cherries yes we have some parsley over here and look at the little flowers the Jamaican cherries are making beautiful yep some peppers in here fever few this is your favorite stinging nettle I made tea with that last night you don't like touching that oh my goodness my finger was swollen for like 30 minutes just from touching it so always wear your gloves especially this time of the year in the spring when they first come up they don't sting but after that enter at your own risk we have some spicy mustards over there brown mm, mustards yummy some of them over here I have whorehound that I need to harvest right there. That's good for coughs and colds. Bok choy here. And I've been taking stems of the, this is a Jerusalem, not a Jerusalem, I'm sorry, a globe artichoke. So this is a different artichoke than the one out there. This one has the big bulb, that's like a tomato with spines on it in the middle when it comes up. But the leaves are very medicinal, so I use the leaves too to make tinctures. And we have some new kale coming in over here. More perpetual spinach and Swiss chard. Genovese basil is the background in this group over here. It's been the star in this box. And also, don't forget our wonderful turmeric, which will yes. be ready for uh, harvesting too. The cool thing about this is whatever dies back and doesn't come out this year, it'll come back out in the spring. And over in this box here, there's some romaine lettuce, and this is more of the um, lemongrass. Sweet potatoes, I'll be using these leaves once again. I use these in stir fries, so that's breakfast, and then also I use them for juicing. I have some dill here. More cannabis. Mmm, so aromatic. And mm, here's our mm, mm. beautiful ginger. Where's Gilligan? Oh, she's on the island. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's, there's periwinkle, vinca major. Periwinkle has been used for strokes and for other uses, and it's uh, very medicinal too. I have, this doesn't look like a lot, but I love it. This is chamomile, it has that little weepy look to it but believe me they have the beautiful flowers and it'll start to stand up even in the winter time when we cover this over it'll start to bloom so you'll see that i have more uh cannabis plants to the back more peppers here more guinea leaf or anima more lemon lemon balm more uh, another jamaican cherry And we have some more greens back there. Mm, what kind of kale is this? That's not kale, that's a mazika, mazitu. I may not even be pronouncing it right, but I know it starts with an M, but it's a Chinese green. We use it in salads. Okay. And there's some more catnip and mountain. Mm -hmm. Sage over here. Oh, a big pot out there with a lot of catnip and oregano in it. Yeah. Our tomato plants are doing pretty good. These are mm, these tomatoes. are little uh, cherry tomatoes. These are the flowers. I too. see. So let's take a look at our cabbage. I saw flowers on my eggplant. Show them some some peppers here for a second. 
Yeah, and there's beautiful peppers over here too. I don't know so what we're doing species um, they a are. little bit of fasting this morning, but for lunch, we're definitely going to use some of these bad boys. More lemongrass. And these peppers over here. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm waiting to see because we had flowers over here. Well, we saved them from the caliper killer worm. Yeah, my husband gets a little um, night uh, night investigation and he found some tomato worms and we took care of those babies. Yep. They were having a good time too. They had almost yep. demolished one plant. He was so angry, but he got with them. They met their maker and they're in a better <laughs> place. They're in caterpillar heaven right now. He said, not on my watch. <laughs> so, Eating our food that we worked hard for to grow. Yeah, we just had some um, raspberries planted in the ground. Oh, there's my healthy catnip. That's, that's the one I was looking for. I'm going to be harvesting from that one, that catnip today. So a lot of that and the yeah. oil in there. Yep. And in this box, there's a fusion of things. Uh, black eyed Susans and some nettle that's growing wild in here. And lots of ginger. And we're finally going to take a peek. Mm, great. You see, our cabbage is doing yeah. pretty good. I think he's going to get a head on it. Oh, it's not quite time yet, but it's doing good in here. We're kind of trying to keep the, the bugs from eating everything right now and not getting too much sunlight. So, yeah. And then we have a little bit more uh, turmeric over here. A little lavender, black eyed season. We just had three trees put in the ground. Uh, we had to, the dogs and the grass reseeded for the women. And, oh, look at the little chase berry. They're coming on? Yeah, this is the Vitex chase berry. Chase berry. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And more um, sunchokes. Yes, more sunchokes. Those are the other sunchokes right there. There was a little bit of amaranth in there, too. And this is ammo with right here too. And the hawthorn. Callaloo. Hawthorn berry. Ammo with leaves are edible too. And yes, that's hawthorn again. The ammo with leaves are edible once again. This is more holy basil. And we got some nice collards in here. They're doing good. Against these four clocks. They were beautiful for about the last three weeks and they're kind of Playing dying out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have some elderberries here. Periwinkle there. That elderberry plant will get real huge one. Yeah. And then look. Look what we have here. In our little dwarf. We have some little kimquats. Really? Over. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're doing really good. Well, that feeding paid off anyway, huh? Yeah. My husband's been feeding the babies some jadam. That's Jadam liquid fertilizer that was developed by Young Sung Chow. And I have to redevelop it and we've been using it steadily. So I've been harvesting mulberry leaves for tea. I got a lot of the lower ones off. I might get a few more, but I definitely got at least two nice bags. I probably like got a little bit over two pounds. Mm -hmm. And this is, these are our hibiscus plants. This is the American hibiscus now. It's doing very well. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. And the leaves again are medicinal. You know, I try to point that out because sometimes we're just thinking it's all about the fruit. We love the fruit, but also the leaves can be used. And when the weather gets bad and we're all trying to get all that over-the-counter medicine, you don't realize you have a pharmacy right out in your own backyard or you could have one. And also showing you, my husband can show you, using pots. You don't have to just necessarily put it in the ground. We have raised beds and we're using pots. So, you know, it's never too late to have a garden, maybe you're in an apartment. Uh, if you have a balcony or either bring, I bring a lot of this inside. I have 42 plants inside of my house and they have some type of medicinal use to them. They, you know, so we can start right where we are and we don't have to say, well, you know what, I've got to have the land. I don't have acres of land. We have a nice size lot, but it's not acres, but it's definitely doable. And if you have an apartment, it's definitely doable inside and outside. So these three trees we just planted in the ground. Well, we had them planted in the ground. 
and my husband had the gardeners to do something different. Let me um, explain that to you. Yes. Uh, I'll take it from here. Um, you know, often when you plant a tree and you bury it and submerge it, you know, in the earth, you're left with feeding and watering. And it takes a while for that water to reach the target zone or the root ball of the tree, so no matter whether it's just an ornamental tree or fruit tree. So what we did was to have the landscaper uh, make some tubes. And you can see that has a drain on it. And that way that when you use your organic solution, hopefully it's organic, you don't use chemistry in your garden, uh, that's not organic. And you can pour and water right down into the drain and it will go immediately to the root ball of that tree or plant. That way you don't have to wait uh, hours or days for the water that is on the earth and then it drains down slowly. This way it gets there immediately. Especially so, in Las Vegas with caliche. Especially with, in Las Vegas with caliche. And so here we have our fig tree that um, they're going to prune next week and I'll be taking probably some of the clippings to uh, Wilma, um, and is it, to make it is, it is a massive fig tree. Yeah. I mean when we got this tree it was the circumference which is about an inch on this um, this fruit tree here and now over the years we've been here seven years when we bought this house the trunk is massive so and it's been giving us Figs. Figs, figs every year in abundance as well as our mulberry yeah. tree i always have enough to freeze and then next to it it looks like nothing and we're going to have this cut back again this is ashwagandha and ashwagandha grows small but this thing puts out every year i kept this one as the mother plant because i can put from it and start new plants which i've done so many times and then you can and then it has the little red berries on it but so um it's leaning over now but it behind it is a great bush the grapevines as well we got attacked twice this year with the grapes we didn't have one harvest every time the grapes came out um, they were taken over by those little green and purple black looking uh, uh, caterpillar fly things and we had an attack on the ashwagandha for the first time now ashwagandha doesn't usually get this big when they use the roots of it but you can use also the leaves and the berries for medicinal purposes so I keep this one as a mother plant and I always take clippings from this to grow new ashwagandha. But it will be cut back uh, probably in the next few weeks. We're going to be cutting this back and the grapevines again. But I wanted to show you the fruit trees because they're doing really good. But um, when we put these other ones in, my husband had the whole dug. He was struggling because he said that the soil is so, the caliche is so, you know, big and strong here in Las Vegas in the desert. And we didn't want to go through that with our fruit being shrunken and tightened down that we could get a better grip on. So look out to, just to see what's going to happen with those new fruit trees. I'm excited about it. They already look good. I'm standing on the lawn that I shouldn't be standing on because we just got it seeded. So I'm going to get off of it. But it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. Be sure to like and to subscribe and just take your time and walk with us. You can hear the birds. It's some fresh air out here and we're always going to bring you something new, something positive, something that's going to give you life. You know, so that's what we're all about. We're just gonna show you things in our garden and hopefully that you can join in, you can ask questions, make comments, but you can't do that unless you like and subscribe. Talk to you soon, take care.